What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode 14 of the Batch and Arthur podcast. Yay. Yay. Let's go. Thanks we, for joining, everyone. We have something to reveal. <gasps> yes, we do. I know you guys don't like it when Arthur has his mug on the couch because he tends to drop things, don't you? Never dropped anything, actually. Okay. You dropped that thunder done. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have noticed I also have my mug on the sofa. Mm -hmm. Wondering why? Who wants to know why? Should we tell them? Something to do with one like equals one Lara, maybe? <laughs> Something to do with that, exactly. You guys ready? Shall we reveal? Go! Way! <laughs> Way! For audio listeners, we have white mugs with our little cartoon characters on them. That's right. Back to little cheers cartoon me against alien. my... Will, I didn't want to cheers you. <laughs> and I've got my little handsome space guy. Come on. Yeah, Lara surprised us with these. This is a gift. Um, mine's shatterproof as well, apparently. No, oh, it's not shatterproof. Yeah, he's got a plastic mug because we know what he's like. <laughs> I've got a sippy cup ceramic. for the audio listeners, actually. A little rubber sippy cup with two handles. <laughs> well, actually, when Arthur drinks from a mug, show him how you do it. I'll, I'll commentate for this. He uses two hands, so he grabs on the, like, handle... And then he grabs the other hand. I drink everything with two hands, especially tea and pints. Yeah, I don't really know what. Do you, is there a reason for that or not? Safety, I guess. Twice as balanced. Is that really? If one arm stops working, the other one's there as a fail safe. Well, there you go. <clears throat> That's why he does it, guys. So it makes sense all after all. Yeah. Um, speaking of Batch and Arthur. Oh, this, yeah. This podcast design right here. Yeah. <clears throat> this has been plastered on something recently. What? Our rocket ship. Oh, yeah. Guys, we just got back from the Red Bull Soapbox race. And we're alive. 2024. We genuinely were not sure we were going to survive. No, I was but we did. really scared. We we turned up. We got to see other people's carts. Um, and there was basically two things going on. So there's like a public race. And then the creator race was like a separate thing, which is streamed on YouTube. If you go on Red Bull's um youtube channel and you go onto under the live tab you can actually watch the full thing yeah we were like <clears> a half time race yeah it was basically a half time like a, show yeah there was a few people who weren't happy about the creators uh racing because they thought we were mixed in with the public but it's like a whole separate thing like we can't win any awards over the public or anything like that yeah um but but we yeah. won the hearts of the public come mm. on yeah we did win the hearts of the public there was uh, a couple of things that you were like rated on and oh, yeah. as creators and one of them was people's choice and we got a landslide victory of 44 yeah. percent yeah it actually ended up on 49 percent 50 percent out of four teams we okay, got 50 no, we need of votes. 49 but everyone rounds 49 thank you to 50. everyone who voted for us there were we, yeah. we were only one of four teams but we were up against chip and freezy who have a big loving audience yeah. becky and pie face who, who are the same audience and then con, con from the side men huge loving audience and the guy well. who's our cameraman on the train video the side men that's right jack well, was there as well we went to leo jack Minister. went down with con and they jack had cool outfits the side men. Yeah, they but uh cool. we we got to ali pali uh that's my first time there you've been there before actually i think we should start the day before okay let's let's reel that shit back because we had another sleepover kind of yeah we did have another let's just say oh no we didn't really this is no. a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> we did not have a sleepover. But what did we do? Where did we first meet? We, we met at um, the... We met at the hotel. At the hotel. Dropped um, our bags off. Uh, Adam was there. He's the Red Bull guy that was been looking after us. And he took all the creators out to dinner. Yeah. We cho chopped a Red pint Bull. at the hotel first. Yeah. Chopped a pint. Um, Both hands. Come on. Yep. Then we got in a taxi. <laughs> we went to dinner. We had a creator dinner. Um, what did you eat? pizza yeah i had it a really really hot pizza. hot pizza and but the thing i was enjoying the most was the football we had a massive screen in front of us oh yeah because france were playing netherlands, it was netherlands huge france. Screen. i felt kind of harsh because the the table was positioned in a way that only half of us could see the football yeah and the other half were just watching us watching football yeah <laughs> but no it was they were good. watching a react video basically yeah, yeah they got to see us live reacting in the flesh um but the meal they was really good the food was really good uh jake was struggling jake the guy who works with um Arthur, they both got the same pizza. He was struggling with the heat. Yeah, he Pussy. was. Pussy. <laughs> struggling with the pints as well. Yeah. Bro got two pints deep and was steaming. No, because he was so in denial. Jake, yeah, Jake had a couple of pints and he was gone. And we were like, <laughs> you are drunk. He's like, I am not drunk. And he was getting angry. <laughs> he was yeah. Mad. So I'm not even drunk. He's like, I haven't even done anything. Yeah. <laughs> Hour later, he's doing karaoke. So that's, that's yeah. all. Belting out karaoke <laughs> with his phone to the to the mic oh, with, yeah. vo with oh voice note God, on. Oh my God, it's so, that was so He was so singing funny. those tunes to someone. 
yeah, yeah we, we um, to... yeah, because you've been to a place before. Should we say the name of the place or not? Mm, I actually, not? I don't remember it anyway. Okay, we went to this place anyway. Arthur's been there before. It's um like a karaoke bar with uh like an arcade and bowling and there's a dance floor and like a bar and stuff like that. Yeah, very good fun. We all went there, did some karaoke. Went there for um, Arthur Hill's birthday. That's how I found out about right. it. What a place. It is a cool place, actually. Um, yeah, did a bit of karaoke. We were in there for a couple hours doing karaoke in the end. Yeah. Um, Belting out tunes. By the way, Batch can sing. No, <laughs> Arthur can sing. Yeah, but I think people would assume that from... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but Frank Sinatra came on and, oh my goodness, Batch was just like, cooking that thing. Anyone can sing Frank Sinatra. Cause Welcome it's... back, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> he died and this is him reborn. Wasn't, wasn't he heavily involved with the mafia, Frank Sinatra? So are you. You're a quarter Italian. That's true. But I can't admit that. No, not legally. Anyway. Oops. They're going to come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> Try and come and get me. Watch me beat, beat you all up. Actually, I shouldn't say it. What if they do? Don't come and get me, please. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> I've got nothing to do with them. He lives on 32 Italian <laughs> Backstreet. <laughs> oh my God. That actually is my house number. Bell. What well, the... don't say that. No, nah, it's not really. That's my apartment number as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, you're not finding out where we live. Um, <laughs> I'm going to move in with Arthur anyway. We moved in together on Minecraft. Yeah. Sort of. Anyway, back to karaoke. Mm. We had fun at karaoke, then we went home. We didn't get back till 3 a.m. Silly move, because we had to be up early. Yeah, we had it. Well, not that early. We had a 10 a.m. taxi pick up. <laughs> yeah, but we met at breakfast at 9.30. It was the most romantic breakfast of my life. Yeah. Um, and then... Stayed at the Hilton. Red Buller oh, class. Like, they put us in... They, they also, like... What a lovely experience. Not only did they take us to dinner, they... They paid for karaoke and everything like that. Yeah. And they the covered everything. Stuff. Shout out to Red Bull. And I'm going to yeah. crack one open right now. And they're actually delicious. All these colored Red Bulls. My actual favorite is the summer edition. You guys should actually try this. This yeah. is not sponsored, but I'm just saying. This is not even the first thing I did. I, did. I went to Salzburg in Austria and did some Red oh, Bull Salzburg video shooting with Chris cool. MD. Um, we did like penalty shootouts and games with Mads Bistrup for their YouTube channel and then did a, a video in... It was the, the final one of Chris did a, every time you beat a defender, the defender gets upgraded. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And we started off with like Harry Rochaw as the worst defender <laughs> and all the way up to Champions League, Mads Bistrup, who, fantastic player. Mm. I mean, Yeah, you realise how really good, good, like when you watch t uh, football on TV, you think, oh, I could do that. Yeah. But then if you see a actual pro in real life, yeah, like, that makes sense why you went pro now, actually. Yeah. We need to do more charity games though, that was fun. That was fun. There are a lot going on. It's just yeah. timings because there's so many things going on during summer and that's usually when charity matches go down. Yeah. Like, you've got to work <laughs> in the schedules. Either you're away or I'm away or there's a brand trip or something has to be submitted in time. It's crazy. Yeah. But um, no, I'm sure we're going to do a lot more stuff with Red Bull as well, so that's exciting. Um, but anyway, we then got the taxi to Alex Alexandra Palace. Ali Pali. Come on. And um, I've only just realized that's what it's Ali Pali. Really? Yeah. I, <laughs> I just thought that Ali Pali was the hill. <laughs> and Alexandra Palace, Palace was, was the palace. No way. Ali Pali. And, and now that I've just Palace. heard it, I was like, okay, that's, that's what it's so called funny. Ali Pali. Right. Anyway. Uh, you almost did an off the TV intro then. Right. Right. So <laughs> then we, uh, we got into the race. So we, no, we got into the zone where the race was going on. Yep. And we got to have a little scout out at all the public submitted soapboxes. Some really cool stuff in there. Yeah. Th well, the, there was one weird one because we rock up and there are like four girls gathered around what is essentially oh. a double bed. <laughs> one girl just tucked up and you and Batch were like, oh, this is cool. And she was like, yeah, it's really cozy. Get in. And we were like, <laughs> no. <Nope. Nope. laughs> <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't doing all that. <laughs> I'm sure though that, you know, that wasn't actually her like lying in it. Yeah, I know. You design. could tell something was weird under the covers, but I was not getting involved. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What the what? hell? Um, oh, you can't see my soundboard. I've got to pull this back so I can soundboard here. Yeah, he hasn't got a Bro. soundboard yet. Thank goodness. <laughs> Although I should. No. Nope. Uh, they all see the comments, by the way. Lara and Arthur see the comments. And Lara even said into the group chat, she was like, I think we need to get back to soundboard because of all the comments. She sent me a message being like, listen, we've got one purchase a year we can authorize. Either we get cool mugs or Batch gets a soundboard, and I was like, mugs, mugs, Oh, mugs, hell no. <laughs> oh, I just think it's so much funnier when you do it yourself and go to yeah, press the Yeah, I do button. think so. But this is going to get worn down, and eventually there's going to be a hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, audio listeners don't know what I'm doing. I I just put, I pretend there's a soundboard and I just yeah, push the sofa it, it, and make but my I own I do it noise. as well. I do it in real life. I'll be speaking to people when I'm yeah, there, but it doesn't make as set much sense in real life. Bruh. So no, he's just in a conversation. He's just air poking stuff as he goes, bruh. You know what's so funny as well? I showed back this. Someone, one of you guys, one of our listeners, because I, you do it quite a lot, but I do it all the time at you. What? Do the, what? Yeah. What? That thing. Someone oh, did a yeah. TikTok called Watting People in Public. Yeah. So she goes into this petrol station, goes to pay. And she goes like, how much is that? And he goes like, oh, £13.50. And she just goes, what? <laughs> and just How loud, pays, so loud. Just yells it in this man's face. And everyone oh. was like, Badger and Arthur, Badger and Arthur, you guys have to recreate this. It was so funny. Yeah. And then Arthur was like, we've got to do this. We've yeah. got, I don't know if I have the, like, what is it? Um, social confidence to do that. I'd be able to do it, not yell it. I thought it was a bit rude though. <laughs> yeah. The, the loud yelling, not in a bad, I'm not criticizing you. I just wouldn't <laughs> no, be able to do like, that like that myself. I'd be like, what? I think. Sorry, when, we've got no, no soup of the day. What? What? When you have a camera on you, though, that you get a newfound confidence in public. Like I found me. This, no, no, no. In general, um, I don't know if you agree with this. One but does. In like a sideman video, I feel like rules don't apply. Like social rules then don't apply because you've got a camera on you and you can do where you want, whatever you want. Yeah, I've only recently started being able to finally find it within myself to vlog. Like when we oh, were sat at Wagamama's, yeah. I was like, "This is actually fine." Yeah. Whereas before, I'd look at people vlogging in public and I go, "I admire your locks. I can never do that." It helps having people around you. Yeah, although I feel like we do it with our phones, so it's a bit easier. That's true. Yeah. Whereas if people with their cameras out, like facing their way, I'm like, oh my goodness, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be so embarrassed. Yeah, I think I would be as well, especially if you've got like a big rig on the end of that thing. Yeah. People are just admiring your rig. Yeah. Both of them. Come on. Anyway, um, what, speaking of the soapboxes that we saw, um, there was this one, there was like these four guys like lying down, chilling, and they had this like dome, <laughs> oh, yeah, which was kind of like... A, I guess like a space, you know, the space shuttles that count, come down to Earth. It kind of looked a bit like that. Didn't yeah. It? Um, like a landing <clears throat> module. Yeah, like a landing module. And they, what did they, what did they make it off? Fiberglass or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You could smell it from where we were stood. And they were like, stick your head in that. <laughs> so we stuck it, you stuck your head in first, took a whiff. And yeah. I did it afterwards. Oh my God. Dizzying, genuinely dizzying. I'm high. I'm still high from that moment. If anyone's ever been in like a, a surfboard shop, where they like make the surfboards. Yeah. It smells like that. It yeah. just smell exactly like that. And they it was spend very the, bizarre. I just burped on that. I, I thought that was what that was. That was disgusting. I hope, hopefully that didn't get picked up. Apologize. <laughs> Sorry guys. Sorry if you heard that. Cut that out. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's not getting cut. Uh, it, they had to spend the whole run down in that thing. So I think those guys are a little bit waved. Yeah. I'm glad we, now. I'm glad we were just a team of two. And had two seats because I kind of felt bad. Some people that pushed the soapbox thing down. Yeah, that's were like true. Like running after it for like 50 meters and it was a hot day. That's true. Like um, most people is like a team of four and two would push, two would be in it. I think that's standard, isn't it? To have two people in the soapbox mm. and then a team that will push and chase it down. Probably chase down chip and, chip and freezies. Yeah. That's so funny. It was funny as well, the way he was running. Because I guess it was like a, it was like Looney Tunes-esque. Like <laughs> he had his arms up like that, <laughs> chasing them down. To be fair, there are people I felt more bad for. Who talk about some of the injuries of the day. Oh my God. And this is the thing. Like, Good gosh, man. We were These already were... nervous. Then we, were, then we got to saw, see our um, vehicle, which they had made some mods to, by the way. So it put me at ease a little bit. They put foam in the place where my head would smash. Oh, yeah. So I felt better about that. Yep. Um, they didn't, they were going to cut out the wheel arches so we could turn more, but they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. I actually think that worked in our favor. In yeah, it did. Um, and they were actually slagging it off when it went up on towards stage. They were speaking about it on mic and they were like, they can't turn properly. They can't see uh... over it. And I was thinking, oh no, they're slagging off our thing. They were talking about our buckets on the back and stuff. I don't know if they were slagging off the buckets or just speaking about them. I just heard bucket. I was like, they're talking about ours. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but it actually worked in our favor. And then there were screens up showing the first runs. And it took a while. It was like an hour or two after we got there till the first run. Hmm. Um, but did you see the sheep one? No, I didn't what see I any of the big about. ones, but that's a bad one. There was a sheep. I, we were, I was watching a sheep go down. Um, it was just before <laughs> you did your stunt, I think. And it got all the way to the end and then at full speed flipped over oh. onto their necks. And oh. I think it was one of them that broke their collarbone. Oh. And it looked awful. And after seeing that, me and Pieface were stood together. We were like, I ge we genuinely don't want to go down after seeing that. He was shitting it. I was shitting it. Um, 
And then not only that, I think other people must have like been bruised or whatever, but the other big one that we heard about is we, when we got to the start line, we were there waiting for like 10 minutes and it was because the person who went down before us got knocked out. <laughs> so That's crazy. Yeah, which I didn't see. I don't think we'll ever see any footage of that, but I don't know what vehicle it was or anything. I just heard that they got knocked out. That's why we were up there for ages. Yeah. I mean, it was going down <sighs> insanely fast. Yeah. it look. I mean, it looks quick on camera, but it doesn't look nearly as quick as it feels. Yeah. When you're in that thing, oh my goodness. And you can barely see in front of you. You're bouncing all over the place. You're hitting these jumps. There are bits where there's foam that like splashes you in the yeah, face. In so you eye. have a few seconds of blindness. Yeah. It's mental. It, it, to best describe it, it definitely feels faster than sitting in a car at 60 miles per hour. I'd say faster than it feels sitting in a car going 100. Yeah. Because you're well, so exposed illegal. to everything. We've never gone 100. I've been on the Autobahn in Germany. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, you're exposed, so it just feels so quick. But we were quick. We insanely were quick. insanely quick. I think everyone, we were the first of the creators to go up. Everyone thought we were going to just crash. Yeah, or just be crap and slow. There were so many comments, so many DMs I got afterwards, like, shit, fair enough. Before we even went down, though, before we get, because we, we will react we, to Yeah, we'll down, show actually. you us going down, yeah. But I think we should tell them. Actually, maybe, should we hit play, and then we'll pause at certain bits to be, like, explainer? Yeah, I tell you what, it plays, it goes all the way through, and then they do it in slow-mo afterwards. We can, okay. on the slow-mo, we'll do some explanation. Okay, here we go. Batch and Arthur. We had the podcast sticker. Oh, it was such a good sticker. On the side, which was really cool. And was, they zoomed in on loads for the YouTube video, which is great. Yeah, it was all over the stream, which was ideal. Although you cannot see podcasts there until someone shadows over it. Yeah, someone's just shadowing. <clears throat> and we were stood up there for ages, genuinely. Yeah. Because someone had just been knocked out. Looking down this hill that was just so steep, it's not funny. But look at that thing. That's so impressive. It's so well built. I can't believe it. And I'm, I'm, I'm gutted because I, I actually wanted to say to the, we had a little bit of help from the Red Bull engineers. Yeah. I wanted to say thank you to them or just be like, what did you see that? That was really good. Yeah. If anyone but knows anything by any chance, please pass on our thanks because yeah, they, they helped us. Hopefully they watched it and saw. A great deal. Uh, but we did do a lot. I mean, we did spend two full days yeah. building this thing and, Printing it up and stuff, so yeah. which mean, you'll obviously see in the vlog. I'll talk about I'll talk about something later because there's um this was posted to TikTok and there's some funny comments on there. Really? Basically, yeah. Right. Basically calling us desk dwellers. What? So this oh, is our go. performance. So this performance we didn't know we no was supposed to do. We 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 were told to choose a piece of music, so we chose something like Space Odyssey style, but we had no idea that meant we had to perform. Yeah. And like, like she's saying, like there are points for performance and we knew about 10 minutes beforehand that this 30 second period yeah. of music, we'd have to do a performance. So we were like, let's just do something simple. Gum shields in the mouth, bow and get in. And they were harsh. They gave us a three, but that a also, score. also counts to the, the way the vehicle looks. So I think three is harsh. Yeah. But here we go. Performance score 22 poor, but this is when we started racking up speed. The steering was really weird as well because it Ooh. changed as we got quicker. And we were just bouncing as we went down. Like we'd hit a ramp and oh my goodness, like but it didn't we almost feel... front flipped. That bit, I oh. whipped it around. We whipped around the corner and our, our genuine, one of our wings like clipped a hay bale and just yeah. sliced through it. That one sliced through the hay bale. I was thinking as we came down, I swear I would have hit that side. Had oh. I not hit that side? And then nailed the braking. And you said you could smell burnt rubber when you were braking yeah. on that thing. Because I was like tickling the breaks like before a jump every now and then i do one all as we approach the chicane i pulled it yeah um but they said as we were going down in the commentary like yeah oh this feels fast usually you're hitting like low 20s here and it comes up on the side and we're hitting 30 kilometers an hour yeah, we were going and we were oh my goodness the... i'm glad you didn't break, touch the brake though we didn't need it uh, yeah yeah I mean, you did a, did a little bit, but I mean, yeah, the I, others obviously touched it a lot more. Yeah, I basically kept us at a speed where I was like, this is very close to the line of like whether yeah. we can make this corner at this speed. Because at the end of the day, it's a race. And I was like, we don't want to get up at the end and just be like, oh, like a couple of the soapboxes made it halfway down and just like stopped completely. Yeah. And they were like having to like, like 
I don't know, like yeah, shake like it shimmy forward. It down. Like, it's so awkward. Like we did speak and we did say we'd actually rather crash going pretty quick than yeah. come to a grinding halt because it's just not good material. Yeah, like we did it for content. No one wants to see that. It's for a video, we, you know, we're representing There's, creators at halftime. Yeah, there's so many people watching. We've got a space shuttle that is designed yeah. to get a velocity of 17,500 miles an hour. Yeah. So we were like, you know, hitting... And to be honest, when they gave us those, because uh, we asked for special helmets that covered the face. Yeah. When they gave me that, I felt invincible and I yeah. thought, oh, fuck it. And we had gum shields that we yeah. poured, like poured poured into yeah, boiling water. <laughs> molded them before. And molded them. So we, we felt pretty safe. Yeah. I mean... But still, at 30... We weren't, but we I felt, don't know if yeah. that was miles an hour or kilometers an hour. I think it was MPH. I actually do. Really? Yeah. But whatever it is, at 30, like genuinely, like just whacking your head against something solid is... Well, I mean, someone did get knocked out and broke yeah, the collarbone. Yeah, they did, yeah. It was terrifying. Yeah. They they then do a slow-mo. Oh, okay, let's watch the slow-mo. And we can break down exactly... Because I was thinking there was a point in the chicane when we really whipped round. I was thinking, why did that happen? It was because the back right wheel wasn't on the ground when we were coming up to the oh chicane. My goodness. So when it touched the, the ground, it turned us into a corner. So I was like, shit. And I had to spin it around one way and then back around the other way. Oh, that's you why can we had see that it. major wobble. Yeah, like, and you can see it. It's like, it's because one of the wheels wasn't on the ground. Okay, let's, let's watch. And like in the first one, we'll try and go, for the audio listeners, kind of describe what we're seeing. Yeah. So the first jump, yeah, we, it was a heavy, a heavy bit of kit as well. We definitely had one of the heavier ones. It was, oh. And it was like, so we got through here, the back, that wheel wasn't on the ground. Oh, so yeah. we like had to correct it. Well, the chicane of just having to go really quick left and then really quick right after. Yeah. And then this bit, we hit a bunch <laughs> of stairs and Batch basically grinds We're on the right the hand of them. <laughs> it's because afterwards we had to be on the right hand side. So I was thinking, I can't turn directly after. I'm going to have to turn on the ramp. Like the, claw, the, the course is split in two with like steps on the left and yeah. straight on the right. And we yeah. go down the steps, but like half Grinding, dangling off. Yeah. yeah, you have a choice whether to do jumps or not. Obviously we were going to do the jumps because mm. you get docked time. Um, no, they add time on if you go round because it's a bit unfair. Yeah. So, but we thought. Oh, so you were just like, let's hit it. Yeah. And after the first jump, it it looks like we really jump around. I don't know about you, but in it, it didn't feel that bad. I, I think I'm the exact opposite because I was going flying and my bum still <laughs> Maybe hurts. Maybe it was our positioning or because I was holding on to this. When, yeah, I had nothing to hold on to. I was just sat on a blue seat. I reckon, back. yeah, I reckon that's what it was because it kept me like sort oh, of planted. Yeah, you fixed. And you're in the center. So yeah. with us, like when, when you go off the jump the nose sort of goes down yeah it did yeah and then the back like kicks up into the air and then slams down and because i'm at the back you really got felt I'm, it. you know I, i've got a lot further to fall and i just got whacked and my butt like I, when i sit on the sofa like now i can Does feel it, still it. Hurt? oh it my like god bruised on my, i was actually uns unscathed i was absolutely fine yeah god it was um after that first jump though i got a lot more confidence <laughs> in the run i was thinking oh that was fine i can we could do all the fucking jumps. Yeah. And just go at full speed. No, I rate it. I'm so glad you just sent it because. And you. I mean, you're well, the one fair, on you didn't have a choice you went, yeah. sending it. Yeah, you just, you never well, I had to, no matter what. Yeah, yeah exactly. You thing. couldn't slice down. But uh, I, well, they mic'd us up. Did they mic you up? Because they no. mic'd me up, but I said nothing the whole run. Yeah, why would you? You couldn't. Because the thing is, I was so focused. I think it's because we went so quick because there's a uh, Red Bull posted a video on their TikTok page where because they mic'd up Chip and Freezy. And um, it's of Chip speaking to Freezy and he's like, on the brakes, off the brakes. Okay, oh. we're going to go around this now. And I think it's because they were using the brakes and communicating about the brakes that they had stuff to say. But because we um, were just going, <laughs> you told me before you weren't going to touch the brakes. So yeah. I thought, okay, he's really not. There's no point saying anything. And you know whether to brake or not. So I was just yeah. thinking, I'm just going to drive. I was literally only thinking like, I'm only going to slow us down if I feel like at this speed we either can't hit that jump properly or can't yeah. go around the corner. And I was just tickling it. And it was only well, at the end, like I was it. like, I've got to wait until we cross the finish line before I before, can break. Yeah. And then I just ram it. And because it was a friction break, it's like literally a metal bar that just pulls down onto both onto of the, the rear wheels. wheels. Yeah. It just starts smelling like burning rubber. You and actually we, nailed, that was so good though. Cause we literally landed after that last jump, we landed and I was like, shit, the finish is right there. And all I could hear was, yeah. <laughs> I just knew he pulled that thing so hard. We came around the corner and didn't touch a single thing because he broke just in time. Yeah. And the thing was untouched. Like the they said it, they could, it could get sent yeah. back to one of us. So yeah, I said, yeah. send it to my house. Um, 
I got, I didn't tell you this yet. I got a DM from someone saying, I'm just about to watch your soapbox get destroyed. <gasps> what? <laughs> it's no, it's been graveyarded. It's, we took it to a graveyard, but we no, put it to one side. They told us we could have it. Uh, yeah. Oh, the guy might be lying. I, I pray he is because that's so harsh. But I saw it in the DM request. I was like, shit, surely not. We should message, message Adam. But I think a big part of the reason we couldn't speak or do much else is because we weren't so full send. Like, we did that in 36 seconds. Chip and Freezy were the second fastest in our group, I think. And they were 44 seconds. Yeah. So we were, we were literally seven or eight seconds. I mean, I don't exactly know what their milliseconds were, but we were seven or eight seconds faster than them. And th I mean, the difference, like you watch them go down and they're sort of, doing it at a decent speed, but I thought them being go-karters, you know, they've got their senior frogs they race every year. Yeah. I was like, they're going to bomb it too. Yeah. But they kind of just played it relatively safe. I mean, good time, but like, I do think we, we absolutely sent it and we had this guy come up to us at the end, like, should you say? Yeah, say it. And this guy comes up to us and go, don't like freak out an hour or anything. Um, but we're checking because we genuinely think this was one of the fastest of all time. Yeah. Like fastest soapboxes ever. You thought we hit the world record run right there and then. And they, because they had to check them by the millisecond. Yeah. And we were a fraction of a second off being mm. the fastest ever. One eighth um, of a second. Some, something ridiculous like that. And uh, so I think we were either the second or the third fastest of all time. Yeah. There were rumors at the end of the day, and I don't know whether it was Chip just winding us up being like yeah, the that, last yeah. car of the day was slightly faster. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they said something like the last car of the day actually broke the world record. So mm -hmm. if that is true, we're the third fastest of all time. Yeah. If not, we are the second fastest of all time to yeah. go down that track. And we were either the second or the first fastest of this year's event, which is just the coolest That's thing crazy. ever. crazy. Like, to, we, to be fair, of all so, like we couldn't have picked a design that was better oh, built yeah. for speed. I mean, it's so... Ed People were saying this is, this is aerodynamic, and I was yeah. thinking, it is, but... I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference in this yeah. scenario. And whether it did or not, or whether it was just the fact that you didn't break much. Yeah, I think that was it. It, it was quite heavy. It was heavy as well. We had one of the heavy ones. So at the start, you can tell, this was one of the things we were saying, we should have got two people because we only got Jake to shove us at the start. Yeah. And when, when you start off just going down the ramp, it took us a while to pick up speed. Mm. If we had sort of been shoved and started at a really good pace and kept it at that pace, yeah. I genuinely think we could have built the record, but I'm, yeah. I want to do it again. Same. That's why I wanted to keep that because we could have just modified that and sent it yeah. down. We know that's a winning formula. Yeah. Make it into a submarine or something. Yeah, exactly. That thing works. But Red Bull, like they, they we had such a great time with them. They did so yeah. much for us and we were so grateful. And we were speaking, obviously nothing guaranteed and stuff, um, but they were saying there's a potential for us to come back and maybe do the one that, you know, you launch off a ramp and you're like 10 meters up, whatever. Yeah. And you've got to glide over water as far as possible. Yeah. There are, And there are loads of other sort of like cool Red Bull events and stuff to do. So, um, yeah, I think we make this a thing. If we can do just more of this stuff. Yeah, I loved it. It was genuinely one of the best things I've ever done, I think. Yeah. And there's a, the, the, the only annoying thing is there's so much footage. It's going to take a while to get the video together because Red Bull have clips. We have clips. They've sent us a hard drive of clips. Yeah. I've got stuff on my phone, back to stuff on his phone. Jake has stuff on his phone. So we'll gather it all together. But when the video comes out, I think it'll be such a good one because so good. the whole experience was just the coolest thing ever. And we couldn't be more grateful to Red Bull for oh, that. The, the perfect run at the end. We just ended it so perfectly, the whole experience. I yeah, think. yeah, it couldn't have gone better. Afterwards, we were, we I just elated. felt so cool. Yeah. I couldn't get the helmet off though. Oh, we, yeah, we got to the very we end. I could yeah. not figure out how to unclip the helmet. So I did the interview with a helmet on. Yeah, they could not hear a thing as well. You hear me go, oh, the atmosphere was electric. And <laughs> yeah, I know he said the electric thing. And then we, um, yeah, we. I mean, Kenny so we from finished. South Park hanging out with us. <laughs> we took. I finally, I got someone to take my helmet off. We drove the soapbox down to the graveyard thing, but they said they weren't going to break it. We put it to one side. It might be broken. And then we had to run up the hill because we had to get on the live stream to do an interview straight afterwards. Yeah. And oh my God, you realize how far we came down running yeah. up that thing. That it was, was 400 to 500 meters yeah. back up, up a relatively up steep a hill. hill on a very hot day. We were exhausted from the day before yeah. and, and uh, being the, out the night before and having the race and all that kind yeah. of stuff and in boiler suits. And it was a it hot was day. Boiling. And I got up so sweaty at the top. We of got the... to the top and we were like, that was just it a was thoroughly hard. unenjoyable experience. But it was cool. Cause there, I heard, I don't, I think I told you at the time I heard a kid as we ran past, he was like, Oh my God, racers. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like an F1 driver in that moment. 
Yeah. That already went straight to my head. Yeah, I bet we felt a lot cooler than we probably looked. Just yeah. running around in boiler suits. Uh, I had my Red Bull cap on. We had shades on. Surprised he hasn't got that Red Bull cap on today, by the way. That thing, you're going to have to peel that off his dead body. <laughs> yeah. I've been wearing it so much lately just because I, I love it. it it's good, good for green screen stuff. I, I, that is the one thing I, I, I might start it's wearing the hair more often. It cuts out the wispy hair. Yeah, it cuts out the wispy hair, which kind I've of got that ruins issue. the illusion. I've got that real issue. Whereas when you wear a cap, it's like a smooth round thing and the green screen just looks so much better. See. My editors have all been like, wear a cap as often as possible. Oh, so they even so they tell you what to do, huh? You're not yeah, in they do. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I keep my editors locked away, and then I give them footage, and they're like, "Please, I want to see my family." Please. We share an I'm editor like, now. No. King. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do. King Shout out, me. King. Great, honestly, fantastic worker. His King's great. work ethic. He sent me a video, and oh, like a couple of hours later, he was like, "Actually, here's a V2. I watched it back, and I, I could see some improvements." I was like, "Yeah, King's kind of mentality is insane." And he's not been editing for long either. Yeah. So he's, I think, all self-taught. Cal's amazing as well. Yeah. They're both just great, honestly. Yeah, it's I'm sure Aussie people boys. listening are fascinated here about how much we love our editors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get back to the Red Bull soapbox race. Yeah. So then we did our interview at the very top, which is when because we went down first so we were then followed by all the other creators who did the race uh, we didn't really get to see them at the time because we were running up the, the bloody hill <laughs> but um we got to the top they all slowly joined us did their interviews and then it got revealed the scores so there were different categories we were like ranked on or scored on the first being performance and i i'm pretty sure the style of the cart comes into that as well yeah and so we what did we get like what was it? 20? 22? It was really Out bad. Of 40. I think terrible score. We got like a seven, a six, a three, and a five, something like that. Whoever gave us a three, what's wrong with you, huh? They were grumpy though, because I think Chip and Freezy got something like 39, and the guy, that person gave them a nine. Apparently, they were really mean scoring the whole time. That's crazy. But though. Chip and Freezy knew about the performance thing, which we I didn't. I don't know how they knew about that. We had no idea. Chip and Freezy raced as a box of 20 chicken McNuggets. Yeah. And they brought like homemade barbecue sauce and just Huge dunked it on each sauce. other. Yeah. Uh, probably, probably, probably just poured it all over them. Yeah. Just it was good. Them. Like as yeah. performances go, that's like the best thing you can do. Yeah. So they got a really great score, like almost perfect. Just one yeah. guy dropped a mark on it. Yeah. Um, 39 out of 40. But I feel like, it's just, <laughs> I feel like giving us a three was really harsh. I know <laughs> our performance wasn't great, but the music was very fitting. Yeah. And Maybe we should have pretended we were on the moon with our jumping or something, like walking like that. We just had such a cool car, but we, we just had so little time to think about it. Yeah. I feel like it was harsh, though, because look at our car. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, maybe we were also ranked harshly because we were the first creators to go down. Maybe. Maybe we would have got a better score if we were towards the end. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But um, yeah, we did really bad on that. And then you get, obviously, score for your speed in finishing the race. Yeah. Which, which we, we won. smashed everyone by like four, four seconds or something. Or seven more. or eight, yeah. It's like seven or eight seconds quicker to 44 than this. First to second. Than the second fastest. And I think Becky and Pieface got a DNF. Yeah. Finish did it over a either minute. they hit a minute or they stopped completely. Yeah, because they went over one of the jumps and their front end broke. So the wheel wasn't really like, or the front was touching the floor, dragging across the floor. So they just, I felt bad for them. They just pooed all across, but at least they mm -hmm. got down in one piece. That's the Yeah, they were thing. just in a pint glass. Yeah, it was really cool. And they had a, they had a cool performance. Becky poured a pint on um pie which was funny um con and jack had a cool performance they just had some swagger about it like they were, they? Okay, yeah it was cool oh uh, yeah we um, got cooked on the performance but they did struggle rightly. getting into the vehicle did they is, yeah because it's really hard and narrow to get in oh um they got they everyone got all the way to the end by the way uh con and jack fell over at the end <laughs> this thing just went on its side they they chose thinner wheels i didn't think they were going to make it that far yeah they also had a really high center of gravity because yeah. their car was thin and quite tall yeah like if you looked at their car it looked like it wanted to fall over it was a bit like chitty chitty bang bang but like elongated yeah so they did really well to, and they were drifting it as well it was drifting so they did really well to get to the bottom um but yeah, we were like seven seconds quicker than, or seven or eight seconds quicker than the second fastest, which was it Chip and Freezy or was it Con? I think it might have been. No, Chip and Freezy was, was second, Chip and yeah. With Theirs was heavy, wasn't it, to be fair? So that was yeah. move. Um, and then there was People's Choice, which we said we won 49%. And was those, were those the three It was three those three. So I think the reason, so we ended up coming third. We came third out of the four. I just think it wasn't like, because we won two out of three categories. You'd think we'd win, but I think they gave, they were sort of like weighted. Yeah. So because we were so low on the performance, us being ahead on the other two bits, 
didn't pull us up enough. I think it's really harsh. I think, although it doesn't matter at all, by the way. I don't, <laughs> I don't care. But I do think it's harsh that performance is weighted so heavily in comparison to like, speed has got to be the most important thing. Yeah. Like it's well, a I don't race. Know, that's, that's the way we were looking at it. That's what I was, because it's a race, come on. We were focused on the, the race as aspect. Yeah. Obviously, Soapbox is, isn't Formula One. It's supposed to be like a bit of fun, yeah. creative stuff, which you do get. Um, but yeah, we, we felt true. a bit a hard done by winning two out of the three categories and winning yeah, the race it. comfortably. <laughs> well, it was more like at, in the moment when they were revealing who won out of us four, I was thinking in my head, oh, we've definitely won. Yeah. <laughs> After winning, we got like 50% of the votes for people's choice. So it was a landslide victory, they said, yeah. and a landslide victory on the speed. So yeah. I was thinking we have smashed those two things. Yeah. So surely we've gained loads of points for that. Yeah. And we came third. I was like, I'm actually quite shocked by that. <laughs> I re I, in my head, I was thinking, oh my God, we've won. <laughs> yeah, me too. But um, no, it was not so that it means good. anything. Like we, there's no, I don't even know if no, there's no, a prize. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing for a, it, yeah. I was just surprised, but genuinely, so it was so good. Yeah. It was, it was definitely, definitely, definitely one of the best things I've ever done. I was so yeah, glad that I we agree. did it. I can't um, wait for the proper video to come out and have it all like a... Documentary. Sort yeah. Of documented. Just archive, just being like, oh, I can look back at that video. And yeah, just, yeah. That was a banger. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was really good. Um. And then we stuck around and watched some public racing. Um, and yeah, there was, it, was, it was nice. There was a nice like area where you could get food and stuff. And the worms showed up. Oh yeah, lots of the Patreon supporters. A couple lots of, of non-Patreon Patreon people. And non-Patreon people showed up. Lots of podcast people. I'm guessing everyone there was podcast listeners because I didn't really put it on any platform. No, I think it, it was all uh, podcast We've listeners. We've spoken about it on the, on, on the podcast and in the Patreon group chat quite a lot. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. Um, so thank you. Well, regardless, if it's only whoever showed up and listeners. said hi, yeah. Yeah, thank you guys for coming along because it was so nice speaking to everyone. It was really great, really great to have your support. Um, yeah. And yeah, you, the, you guys were there for most of the day, just like stood by our, um, what do you call it, soapbox? <laughs> stood by our soapbox. We yep. were coming over when we could to say hi and stuff. Yeah, everyone got um, photos. We, well, oh yeah. my goodness, as well. Quite a lot of people wanted us to draw tattoos for them. Oh dear. And we are not so artistic. Pressure. No, we're close. Yeah, we're close. I'm a letter away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I cannot draw to save my life. And I was like, the only thing I can think of was the rocket emoji. Yeah, that, that was pretty good to be so fair. I was trying to draw them, but getting the three little things at the bottom and the fire. I was, yeah. like, I was like, show this to your artist and they'll get what they'll, I'm trying uh, to draw. Yeah, they'll understand. Um, I mean, I just ended up drawing flowers because it's the easiest thing to draw. Yeah. But it's got, got nothing to do art. with me. A lot of art. <laughs> what just happened? You just got bored of your own conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I just yawned. <gasps> I was hoping you'd take it off me really quickly because I yawned. No. Someone asked me for a cameo once where they were like, can you draw something for us to do a tattoo? And I did a, a ringed planet. Oh, nice. And oh my goodness, trying to get... Because obviously, if you put the circle there first, the ring that goes in front, like cuts mm. through lines and it yeah. looks crap. So you've kind of got, got to start, draw, with start with the ring, but obviously just as the ring curves back around, you have to stop. And then you have to imagine where the sphere is going to be. And oh my goodness, I burnt through about half this notebook trying to get one that just looks <laughs> semi-reasonable. So whoever invented Saturn, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. That must have been difficult. And yep. Uranus. Yep. So that's also ringed. Yep. Um, many too many rings yeah i've got a ring do you oh yeah and that weekend batch proposed to me so i said yes no i'm talking about my ass what anyway um <laughs> it, was a, it was a different kind of proposition to the one you were thinking of <laughs> yours is way cuter than mine and i said no oh hell no nah. i just got that that's disgusting because i was like on saturday night we were just chilling we were like god we're exhausted yeah and i was like do you want to just stay around and batch was like yeah so we yeah. played Fortnite and watched scary movies. Yeah, and he took me to get sushi again. Yeah, we went to uh, Sticks and Sushi again. But I was like, I kind of want to make more videos, but we were just so tired. Yeah, I it was too late. You just, what well, you made me watch horror stuff. We, we watched so. a bunch of scary videos on YouTube, like real ghost sightings and short horror movies. And I was like, I, I've wanted to do videos like that with you for ages. Yeah. And I was like, then was the perfect time, but our energy was just shot. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll definitely do it another time. Because people just love that. Soon. Love that horror game. Yeah, it's, it is entertaining to watch other people get scared. People don't want to watch you have fun. Mm, they want well, to watch you cringe and be scared. People enjoyed us having fun on Minecraft. True, but Although you were scared of the I machine. died like five, six times. I'm not very good. Clearly, everyone's making fun of me. Did I die once? I didn't, I don't think. No, but your, your spirit died at one point. Hell no. My spirit Whereas was, my spirit was always My spirit was through the roof. 
Um, when I was getting attacked by Leona Lewis and I was hiding in the house, turns out Leona Lewis can't go in water, so I should have just gone in water. I saw that comment. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, thanks for the comment. I'm actually going to use that uh, logic. And I, I already want to film episode three <laughs> right now. Do you? Yeah, it was so fun. We'll do it this week, actually. It's so fun. Like, I enjoy playing it. We're just loading up we Minecraft. we can film it. Although he needs a he needs a setup. Can we can we tell this boy to put some money towards a proper setup? He plays on his PlayStation, so we have to play Bedrock Edition. So I can't use my nice shaders that make the waters and everything look clean and all the like graphics and stuff. You know, like, well, it's Thames Water. We're keeping it legit. <laughs> the graphics upgrades are insane. Look, just just a bit of, enjoy a humble bit of like Minecraft where it's nostalgic. Not everything has to be polished. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Um, Thank you. But no, it was, it was really good fun. And it is, it is I, I do love that we can just do that kind of stuff and just play a game and it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, we can just like high five when we want. Yeah. Anyway, um, back to, let's go back in time to um, the end of the race. Mm -hmm. he, he wet himself. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. But uh, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we covered everything. No, because we didn't speak about um, the stunt, the stunts oh yeah you should tell them about the stunt they they just flung on you they didn't tell you until yeah they didn't tell me about this before and they made me sign my rights away yeah and it, it was they'd already kicked off the live stream so you just had to do it yeah <laughs> um we basically batch got a nice one he got pulled aside and they were like oh is the driver we're testing your reflexes yeah and what do they do they so she dropped a ruler and you just had to grab the ruler um as soon as she dropped it and just see how many centimeters you let drop to judge your reaction time. I didn't do very, I think I came second actually. Nice. But on the practice I failed. Uh, so I was like, oh, that was nice and peaceful and fun. Well, I wonder what mine's gonna be. And they get me and they go, put this heart monitor on. And I was like, what? <laughs> they put this heart monitor on me, put me in the middle of this cage. <laughs> and this dude called like Douglas or something comes yeah, up in Douglas. this massive dirt bike yeah. and just goes like, I'll lie down in the middle. And I was like, oh, I know exactly where this is going. You've got a rose toy out. Me and Jack just start planking. And he's sort of in this giant, he's giant of a man. I swear he's like six foot four in this yeah. massive dirt bike. And he's sort of there like on one wheel bouncing the like wheel, like yeah. an inch from my head. And I'm like, if he just, if anything misjudges, he crushes my skull. Yeah. Like we, we, we lose one of the bright young talents of this generation. And you as well. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Well, they'd get Jack and you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good old Jack. And then, then he was doing like wheelies around your head, like just driving yeah. past full speed past his head. <laughs> yeah. It was giving me the ick, actually, Slam. just seeing you lie it down there. It was insane. And I was just like, well, I'm playing it cool because that's like the name of the game. It'd be cringe if I got up and, oh, I mean, they, they even said like, if you get up, you're at risk of just getting your head whacked because he's like an inch within your head. So yeah. if you move it at all, you die. Yeah. Um, and for like a minute, he just did this and bounced around. and Yeah. You were down there for a hot minute. Yeah, we were there for ages. Just getting driven around. I thought, oh, this is just getting, this is just cruel now. Yeah. I mean, the poor boy's though. just lying there with a boner, by the way, because uh, he gets, that happens when he gets scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just Why guys do you think I keep getting you for horror games? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, hell no. Boom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. So he's just You're doing so weird, circling, actually. circling, circling around Arthur on the floor. It just, I just felt a bit sorry for him in the end. Yeah, uh, so that was terrifying, but good fun. I, you know, I'm up for anything. I did realize the other day, I'm just one of those friends who's just up for anything. Yeah, you are actually. Someone could be like, hey, we're going to sit inside and watch movies tonight. I'd be like, fine. Or they can be like, come on, man, we're robbing a bank. I'm like, cool. they will be like, come on, we're going glamping for the weekend. Do you, is that real though? Like if I said, oh, genuinely, yes. Yeah. Okay, let's go and watch the Euros tonight. Fine. Let's do it. England, England. This is the last night of the group stage, and all of a sudden the mood is really dead because we're, th we're just through now. We've not played well either. It's been pathetic. There, yeah. I said it. And Harry Kane, when you finally come on this podcast, I've got some strong words to have with you. Uh, mine, mine are reserved for Gareth Southgate and not bringing Actually, Branthwaite yeah, and not playing Kobe Mainu. Okay, sorry, Har Harry Kane. Actually, Gway, he's playing phenomenally, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, he's so doing brilliant. It's not as if we're missing him. But... I'm mad at you, Southgate. Yeah. Italy, um, not playing too bad. Oh my goodness, you're Italian. Did you watch the game last night? And they scored yeah, in the, the 90th plus yeah. eight to go through. 98th minute. And it was to draw against Croatia. Minute, yeah. Oh, that was heartbreaking. Poor the Modric. thing is, they probably would have gone through anyway as one of the people third. Oh. But um, it's nice to confirm it. You know? Yeah. 
But those moments of elation are just so hard. To I think know. Italy just lack a decent striker. Anyway, we won't bore you with football because mm. a lot of people probably don't care about football. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm getting into F1 now. <gasps> yes, you are. You watch I've, Drive to Survive, right? Yeah, I've been watching oh, Drive to Survive. I need to get on that. I really want to watch that. Um, and hence why the Red Bull soapbox race, I was really in, I was really in my element. Because you loved, does I it make you love like Red Bull racer. as well, the Drive to Survive? Uh, does it follow a particular team? It follows them all. And to be honest, I haven't really got like a team I really, um, it's not like I really want to see this team win. It's more people that you care about. It's good to see Red Bull doing well, but um, I like Lando. Do you? Yeah. You're a Lando Norris enjoyer? I'm a Lando enjoyer. I like them all, to be fair, from what I've seen. I like I get, I like Charles <laughs> I like Leclerc. like them all. Oh, because uh, he kind of he kind of looks like Charles Leclerc. Uh, yeah. I get uh, Lando Norris a lot. People always what, say I look like, like Lando? Lando Norris. I'm not sure about that, boy. And uh, obviously, like Verstappen, the ba Red the Red Bull goat. What, Batch Verstappen? High five. What does that even mean? Batch Verstappen, me. Batch Verstappen. Batch Verstappen, me. Instead of Max Verstappen, Batch Verstappen. It's one of the only times that Batch really goes into anything. Batch Verstappen. <laughs> What do you people nickname you at school? Git, <laughs> Tuna Boy, because I brought in Tuna, Fish Boy. Um, right, I, I was going Ugly for more, Duckling. I was going for more names. Uh, like big, name related. Bigfoot. Like, okay. Because I was oh, called. Oh, name related. I was, I was called nothing. I was just called Arthur. I don't know why I said it uh, like that. I was called nothing. <laughs> no yeah, one I ever thought people were just. Me. Yeah, I, right, I nothing. Had no friends at school. <laughs> no, um, I didn't really. People would say ice is a joke. Ice. Yeah. I just, I didn't like not having a cool nicknameable name. My sister, one of my sisters called called, Arthur. calls me Izzy. That's really cringe and feminine. Yo, she watches these. Which is fine. Does Yo, she? she watches these. Apologize down the lens right now. I apologize. Sometimes for she calls nothing. Because it is, it was true. It was my truly held opinion and you should never apologize for being yourself. Sometimes she calls me Elizabeth as well. What? And I don't really know where she got that from. There we go. She just started doing <laughs> that was a good what? What? <laughs> yeah, she watches it where she works. As she was working, she'll have it on. Glizzy. <gasps> By the way, I didn't get cancelled. For what? The Sideman Sunday came out where I waterboarded Chris. I haven't watched that. And I was seriously worried. I was genuinely like, I thought, you know, just some people on the internet can be real. Yeah, because they might be like, oh, oh they... you're making fun of waterboarding. People actually die from waterboarding. <laughs> That's not what I, not exactly what I meant. Oh, because, okay, you can't waterboard Chris because he doesn't like water and some people have been drowned before. No. Okay, of course, because <laughs> because you shouldn't do waterboarding because it's like saying this is something you should, it's really on impressionable fans and they'll be like, okay, I'm going to waterboard my mum tonight. <laughs> right? Maybe. Maybe that was like, oh, you shouldn't do that on to an impression. I'm going to cancel you right now in that case. Um, But no, I, I, I just thought people would be like, oh, that was so mean of him. They're not friends like... Right. Just, you know, when you don't really know, I mean, obviously anyone who's seen Chris and Lee videos knows how much abuse he puts me through. I mean, that guy abuse. <laughs> showers down on my neck like there's no tomorrow. He's just, I'll just be chilling mid shoot and he'll just go on my traps. I mean, granted, they're juicy, like they're nice, muscular, Chris, defined. What the fuck? And, um, you, have you ever thought you might just be a vampire? I don't know. Hiding in plain sight. You know, you've got two pierce marks right there. <laughs> <clears throat> You getting sucked by Chris you've got, MD. You've got really garlicky breath, so I don't think I could be a, a vampire because otherwise... Let's not start rumours like otherwise that. Otherwise, I'd, I'd run. Let's not start rumours like that. Yeah. My breath smells like daisies, rainbows, fairy tales. I'm always chewing gum. You are always chewing gum. You're a real gum chewer. Yeah. You boost, it boosts your confidence. It's like putting a pair of sunglasses on. I'm glad you don't do it on the podcast. That would be the most annoying thing to listen to. I have done it before, but I just tuck it into my teeth like snus. <laughs> 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 You don't mean that. It's gum. You don't mean that. It's gum. It's just weird. You don't mean that. It's gum. Gum started freaking me out. You know, we were speaking about eggs the other day. When you're midway yeah. through eating eggs and you're like, <clears throat> wait up. Yeah, hold, hold on, on a minute. That's a period. Something ain't right. That's a menstrual cycle right there. And you're like, yeah, well, that weirdly makes me like it more. It's more than... <laughs> I knew you were a feminist. Me too. Come on. Yeah. Um, we do like to bring awareness to the fact that women exist and... 
yeah. menstrual cycles. Because I, I, I mentioned menstrual cycles all the time. And I, in one of my YouTube videos, I was like, I've got to stop saying menstrual cycles. Drop a comment if you think I should stop saying menstrual cycle. And everyone's no. like, no. And someone was like, no, it actually feels kind of feminist in a weird way because you're yeah. bringing light to the fact of like, periods. Because not everyone knows that women have... <laughs> I think everyone knows women have periods. I found out three days ago watching your video. <laughs> <laughs> you thought they had penis. <laughs> what? I just thought they merely existed. They merely exist in a, in a realm between heaven and hell. Where somewhere I, love doesn't exist. <laughs> what the hell is this guy talking about? Women only exist in heaven. Women are heaven on earth, mm. in my opinion. How does that song go? Heaven. Heaven, Ooh, heaven for what it's earth. worth. Mm, women are heaven on earth. Women are heaven on earth. Brother in Christ, you don't know what you're talking about right now. I feel like we're getting on to I, serious brain rot. Have you got anything else? Oh, yeah, because I This had, is a, a, a rare batch prepared. Yeah, episode. Arthur's actually been praying, preparing a lot, um, all, all of the episodes lately. We've actually, yeah. Hence why the quality's increased. Um. <laughs> no, you do, you do stuff in a different way. I like, like reading and. Talking, reading. Well, stuff. next episode's prepared by Arthur, and we'll yeah. be filming this directly after this one. Yeah, we're doing complete two in a row transparency because Batch is away on holiday. And I'm going to be honest because I'm not. I've not brought a spare pair of clothes anyway. So yeah, me neither. I don't want to hear no tell. comments like, "Why is he wearing that shirt yeah. again?" Well, they should be commenting because quite I've frankly, worn this on an episode before. Quite frankly, Arthur is either. Can I just say, by the way, I predicted what you were going to be wearing on the Red Bull meal. I said Arthur will turn up in black corduroy shorts um, and a cream beige top, uh, shirt. Either worn as an over shirt with a white t-shirt underneath uh, or just a shirt. And, I wore that and shirt. that's exactly what you that's wore. That's true. I mean, I have two other pairs of shorts. I had a black like pair that were like had textured, but the waistband thing snapped. Really it's hard to find together. a good pair of shorts. And though. then I had a, a nice like cream beige pair. Yeah. Um, but they were just like, just, I don't know, linen and just ended up being a bit too. And take it from a guy who's had a sleepover with him. He doesn't take them off. He showers in them. He goes Bax to sleep in them. wanted me to take them off. He was like, take them off, take them off, take them off. And I was like, leave me alone. Yeah, I was like, please wash, please wash. You were just misreading <laughs> me. I wasn't saying take them off. I was like, please wash, please wash. <laughs> anyway, I, I got the, um, I went into the Patreon chat. Ooh. Uh, little plug, if you want to join the Patreon, go ahead. There's a chat. You get early access to episodes. They get uploaded but actually on Wednesday. Yaps in there all the time and bullies me in it. Yeah, I, I do speak in there a fair amount. Um, and I said to them, we're filming two pods today. Can you guys reply to this message with any questions you have about the Red Bull Soapbox race? We're going to be doing a whole episode on it. Because uh, I thought there might be, you know, they might want to know more information on how it was built or how we were feeling and stuff. Like, and we could just give us some insight to that. We've just explained the day, how cool it was, blah, blah, blah. But they want to know the BTS. Let's see how insightful their questions can be. Okay. Did you hurt your nose? <laughs> That's fucking rude. No, I didn't. <laughs> that was obviously pointed at you. No, I didn't. To be fair, I did. We had said in an episode prior that there was no foam and we are going to smash our faces in. They put foam in and we had good helmets on, but we yeah. didn't actually crash. So Yeah, we didn't crash. So we're Unhurt. Fine. Although his coccyx bone is in pain. Yep, my coccyx. I'm absolutely fine because I'm not weak. That's your tailbone. Um, May asks, For us highly evolved apes. That was from Brooke, by the way. I'll say names, shout outs. May says, how slash why did you decide to build a rocket? Why? I guess because it's very on brand for us. Have a look at our mugs. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we're just, we're, we're a spacey themed podcast for no apparent reason. We genuinely, yeah. I'm sure we said it in the early episodes, we had no plans to be themed. And Bats just randomly one day went, let's just make it space themed. I just think it's cool. Yeah, me I too. just think we both think it's cool. We do. We just need a cool set. I think most of the things we do is because we think, oh, it's cool. Like the soapbox, we thought, oh, it'd be cool if we did a, a ship or a UFO. Yeah. Just because it just because. It's funny. Someone actually messaged in for the next one. I've got like the submissions from the normal submissions page, which everyone can enter. Just go to our any of our socials at Batch and Arthur. And in the link, there's like a, a link tree and... One of them is the submissions form. And they were like, what is your target audience? Because I can't really figure it out. And I'm studying media at the moment. Target audience is such a big thing. And I was like, mm. we don't have one. We just no. come on and talk about whatever we find interesting. Yeah. And just hope that some people agree. Yeah. And our, the people who do listen are actually very um, diverse. Yeah. And intelligent and cool and good and looking. Handsome and handsome and all of this. Yeah. 
Um, because so, yeah. Fit. No, um, yeah. And it's, it's weird because we're not sitting there going, oh, let's talk about this to appeal it, to this yeah, audience. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Which I think is, I mean, somehow it works. So thank you guys for yeah. tuning into. The, Thanks. Because I, th I think if you analysed it in like a media class and it was like, oh, one minute you're doing brain rot meme references yeah. and the next you're talking about Cybermen and then the next you're talking about Greek philosophy yeah. and the next one like Roman parables and then religion. Yeah. They'd be like, well, someone's going to listen to the one episode, like it and then not like the rest. Yeah. But for some reason, people just like listen to it all, really. I think we just decided that we're just going to do what we want. Like... Yeah, the whatever best, we enjoy. Yeah, like whatever we enjoy and whatever we fan feel like talking about, we're just going to do it because if you want to enjoy something, you've like if you want this, if we want this podcast to continue, we've got to enjoy it. Mm. And if we're looking at it tactically, like, oh, let's do an episode on this so we can boost our audience in this demographic, it will start to feel like a like a yeah. real job. Or like, you know, I've heard from other people that do podcasts that their producers will be like, today you're having this guest on. And they're like, well, I've never watched the show they're on or never followed them. Don't yeah. really care about the story, but I've got to do it. It's nice that we kind of have are just yeah. able to just go, oh, whatever. And I do think the stuff we talk about is interesting broadly. Like if you're someone who, like whenever we meet or speak to anyone who watches the podcast, they're always like, oh, I love like these types of interesting discussions. I feel like if you have a generally curious mind, yeah, like if, if people who are listening to this and enjoy it, are going to be similar to us in that respect and they you know even if they don't have a, an interest in any of the particular like they might just be like oh i love hearing about religion i'm a curious person but they don't care about greek philosophy yeah or anything when we speak about the ship of theseus they're still like they're finding interesting. oh it's an interesting thought like yeah, it's yeah. an interesting thought so if yeah. you're one of those types of people like us and all that kind of stuff is interesting i guess that's our our demographic is people who just have similar interests to us yeah or like have a similar outlook on life or yeah that's the thing it's not even like similar, similar interests. it's just it's the broad value of curiosity yeah. i think who just like they like to laugh they like a bit of comedy because we even get people who disagree with us and are like oh i'm yeah, really just so, like i yeah. completely disagree with this all but it was so interesting to listen to yeah and so they're not listening because we're speaking about things that they find um they agree with or they enjoy you know but they're going like oh i like i like the way these topics are approached or the way this is discussed and yeah so yeah hopefully we'll try and keep that up um <laughs> hey no way we're going to brain rot 24 7 after here, this or no. <laughs> here or no anyway um connie asked what was your top speed we mm, don't actually say. know but what did you th think it was 30 well when we passed we passed the speed gate at what, what will be one of the fastest points and that was 30 okay but and i just don't know that's mph could hour, be four miles an hour keep it k Ph. Yeah. KMPH. Um, Lelia says, do you think you were going to make it to the finish line? Did you think you were going to make it to the finish line? I genuinely um, did not think we were going to make it past the chicane, to be honest. Yeah. Because I didn't realize the course was as wide as it was. However, the as chicane... As narrow as it was, you mean? Actually, yeah. Yes and no. The thing is, it's like driving a car. When you're in a car... It looks like you're you're bigger than the road, but actually you can fit in much of smaller of a gap than you expect yourself to be able to. And so when you're actually in the soapbox, when we were doing the chicane, in my head, I thought we're going to catch one of the hay bales and go flying. But actually, although it was actually pretty close watching it back, it felt like I had enough room to get round and stuff. Well, two hay bales we did fully slice through. Well, yeah. If the wings were like flat fronted, we would have we could have just it spun out gone, yeah. flown yeah but because the wings were just like yeah we clipped the first wood, one and just, then the second one we through the sliced through that yeah um but in the, no i didn't think we were going to make it down in one piece to be honest i thought either we'd get to the end and there'll be damage or we'd fall over at the end hmm. or we just wouldn't make it to the end because it's not a, like a more often than not you don't make it to the end yeah so i thought statistically i didn't i didn't think we were going to make it to the end Mm. so i was surprised were you or not it's so funny because at the start you're like i really don't know but when you're going down it's so fast and you've got to think a lot like yeah I, I was just constantly thinking like just monitoring whether we were going too fast or not yeah to be like bring the speed down ever so slightly and it's everything's happening so fast you don't have time to think oh are we gonna make it like any hypotheticals it's That's just true, uh yeah. 
pull the brake, break off, break off, break off. Oh my goodness, like, are we going to make this corner? Are we going too fast? Like, how are we doing? Like, all this kind of stuff rushing through your head. I didn't yeah. even think about it. I was... No. So, yeah, I had no thoughts in my head either. I think we were just on reflex at that point. Yeah. Because every... Yeah, like Arthur said, everything's coming at you so quick. Like, before the chicane, I thought I had enough time to put my hand up and wave. And I was like, shit, no, I don't. Yeah. So I, that's when I came back onto the wheel and did that. So <laughs> we really don't have much time in that thing. Um, then Phoenix asks, what was the hardest and easiest part of the creative process? Ooh. Hard part was coming up with an idea for what we wanted to do as the car because we took ages. Like they yeah. were asking us for the design for so long and we were like, oh, we really don't know. It is hard when you can do literally anything. It's like the classic situation where you've got too much choice. Yeah. So you can't make a decision. And neither of us are like necessarily creative, creative types. Yeah. So we, and also it's, it's difficult as well when there's two people because obviously if one person wants to do something, we, we agreed. Yeah, we've we didn't have any really friction on, on what we wanted. We did because we both didn't really have an idea. But you've got to make sure that what one person comes up with, the other person's happy to do. Um, but I think from the get go, we just suggested either a space shuttle or a UFO. We are both happy with those two ideas. And then we had a look at some pictures and we thought, OK, let's go for a space shuttle. And that was it. Yeah. So I think that um, it was hard in the beginning, but. To, to be honest, the decision process is pretty easy for us in the end. Mm. I do think the hardest part, although that was hard, I think what was harder for us was probably um, building the chassis, don't you think? It was harder than the woodwork. Yeah, that's probably true. Because we didn't have any engineer assistance with the underlying car. Yeah, the we actual just, chassis itself. We just had bits. And like, we didn't have instructions for half of it. We were in, in a big warehouse hidden. with just a bunch of nuts, bolts, rods. Yeah, so it was figuring wheels, that all out. That, and we just I mean, had that to piece took it together. a lot of time. Um, I mean, that was a full eight day out, eight yeah. hour day pretty much. Yeah. Just putting the go-kart together. Yeah. I mean, we, we had um, the Red Bull guys come and check them and help if we needed anything else towards the end once we found the instructions and stuff like mm. that. Um, but the woodwork was pretty easy because we'd sent them a design. They'd yeah. they'd then measured and cut the wood for us. And we basically just had to nail it, well, screw it and glue it all together, which was pretty straightforward in comparison to building Yeah, it was chassis. quite obvious where everything went. There was just less pieces. The metal, the nose was the hard bit because we hadn't, Rebel hadn't planned Actually, the nose. Yeah, I think that we. was the hardest bit. And we were like initially considering, because we just had these this giant flat sheet of aluminium yeah and we were like if you cut something that's no shape and then try and fold it it obviously kind of has to fold in on itself yeah so we're like we're gonna have to serrate the lines like sort of you know cut down half of it so that flaps would sort of fold on each other and that would not be particularly aerodynamic not look great yeah and then we ended up just being able to make it work by sort of holding it up straight yeah and folding it over backwards and sort of cone shaping it and it worked got to give a bit of credit to the south african yeah for that. There's a guy working with Red Bull, a South African guy. Yeah. Um, and he helped us with the nose. We needed help with the nose. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was probably realistically the hardest part, the nose. Mm. The nose. Um, yeah, that was all relatively, yeah, Red Bull did a great job. Yeah. And the engineers did a great a great yeah. job on that on that bit. Desi I mean, design of the actual car was probably easiest as well because yeah. we knew where we wanted, we wanted NASA stickers. Yeah, because I mean, white and, yeah, we had seen. Yeah. The, the NASA space shuttle itself. Yeah. And just been like, oh, this is exactly what we want it to look like. So we just like spray the whole thing white, stick on a bunch of stickers, and they surprised us with the Batch and Arthur logo stickers. Yeah, that was really cool. Which was really cool. Um, Kaylee says, did you go down a rabbit hole watching worst soapbox crash compilations before you agreed to do it? Because I certainly would have. They made us on one of the days, didn't they? They made us. We did a reaction video. Yeah, we, they said... I, I, I wonder whether that's part of the video. It probably is. It's probably in there somewhere or you've seen clips somewhere. In that one and a half hour thing, but they sat us in this room with yeah. like 10 people looking at us, which is the most awkward reaction video ever. And ever. just showed us like an eight minute video of just awful crashes. And we were like, yeah. we're going to die. That was the point where I was like, we genuinely are perhaps not going to make it. Yeah. I, I even myself was then on TikTok, even days before the race. Really? Looking up. Yeah, because the, the thing is, some of my family wanted to know what it was. 
And so I'd be searching. Oh, I'll show you what a soapbox race is. <laughs> They're all crash compilations. And you didn't want to so, show them all these people suffering. Well, I did. I showed them. Oh, I showed dear. them those. My mum was going to come, but um, I think she was put off partly by the... I mean, there was ticket situations, but also partly because uh, she didn't want to see me get hurt. She was worried. I can imagine. <laughs> all, if you watch all the crash compilations, some of them are horrible. Yeah, they really are. Um and then Mia asks, why didn't you alter your helmets to look like space helmets? We didn't have that much time. We were given yeah. the helmets about five minutes before we went down. Yeah, they were literally given it when we were up on the platform. Yeah, they probably um, were shared by everyone as well. We were going to wear like astronaut suits, but we just... I mean, the boiler suits look cooler. The boiler suits were almost like a denim, yeah, denim material. Because we were like, if yeah. we come flying up this thing, because we didn't have seat belts or anything. No. Like if the thing flips, we just grind down the tarmac at 30 miles an hour. Yeah. And I had this mm. spacesuit from a chip video. It was just like a really, really thin cotton, yeah, like mine was paper well. thin. We had them, we just and we were like, went for boiler suits. Whereas the, the boiler suits were like proper, like, and I guess engineer boiler suits, like mechanic yeah. type boiler they are suits. protective, yeah. And it's like, you could tell if you flew off, that at least for a little while you'd slide and it would be yeah, you do a bit it would take a yourself. while to wear away before your skin starts shredding yeah so we went for that in the end um and we wouldn't have had choice on helmet anyway so we'd just be wearing helmets as astronauts like being I feel like astronauts. astronaut helmets wouldn't be great for that kind of stuff because they're big glass visor yeah. they're designed to have a lot of visibility and also, my fear and your fear was smashing off yeah that was our biggest fear in front and i think if i had a big glass visor here and i went douche on a spherical <laughs> Helmet, I just, it smashes into that. a billion pieces in yeah. my eyes. We also weren't too bothered on like the whole performance side of things. We didn't know about performance to begin with anyway. Yeah. And also that's just for points on like winning us. The main thing for us was just getting down it, just enjoying the like actual race. Fast as hell. Um, so yeah. So yeah, there, those are some of the questions. There was loads of questions in there, but I just ch just picked a couple of the first ones. Um, so yeah, that's it really. That's all there is to it. Cool. I think wow. I think that can conclude um, our Red Bull Soapbox episode special. Yeah, it was a nice little special. And then next up, yeah, we've got some some a bunch of hypotheticals. I've got some more. I've got some more uh, stories for you. Not sure oh, if it's mythological, really? kind of, but it's sort of like an old anecdote that kind of was almost going to make it into the Bible, but but wasn't kept in. But oh, it's a story I'm, I'm sure you've heard of before. Um, got some really good submissions, embarrassing stories and everything. So anyway, I'll save it for the next episode. But Oh, a little teaser. This was a fun one and, and hopefully the next one will be as well. So, Hey, we've been Batching Arthur and you've been... Say it. I have no idea what you <laughs> want me to say there. The best <laughs> listeners, podcast listeners ever. We love you guys so much. Put them on the spot. Thank you for um, everything that you do. Um, again, we've been, we're still in the top 10 comedy UK podcast. Oh, he's still. At, and it's been over Surprised a month. So that's that. like the coolest thing ever. So if Thanks, you're on, guys. if you're on listening platforms, rate us five stars, if you can, please. Yeah. Uh, if you're on YouTube, like, and subscribe, it, it means a great deal. Mm. And a uh, comment message, follow us on socials at Batch and Arthur, get involved, join the Patreon if you want a couple of extra things, but yeah, Absolutely. so much going on. Thanks but guys. Thank you all. Thanks for everything. Truly. And see you on the next one. See you next week. Bye. Bye.